In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Tuesday, the twenty third of January, twenty twenty four. Third week in ordinary time and participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Lushomo James Aimbe celebrating his birthday today. Child of Honorable Mulambo Aimbe and Prudence Aimbe from Lusaka, Zambia. Text for us the first reading. Joshua Nimsima from Fort Porto, Uganda. Text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Dennis Atandi, who celebrated his birthday yesterday from Nairobi Archdiocese in Kenya. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. A reading from the second book of Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 12 to 15, 17 to 19. In those days, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedium to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a faith thing. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was built with a lion effort. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, and with the sons of the horn. And they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in its place, inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people departed each to his house, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 24, verse 7, 8, 9, 10. Response is taken from Psalm 24, verse 8, a b. Response is, Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher, ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O get, lift high your heads, grow higher, ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Gospel Acclamation Matthew chapter 11 verse 25 
Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. At that time, the mother of Jesus and his brethren came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And the crowd was sitting about him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brethren are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who oh, am a mother and my brethren? And looking around on those who sat about him, he said, here are my mother and my brethren. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One thing I did not do when we started dealing with the book of Samuel was to give an introduction to this book that we are treating. We are dealing now with the second book of Samuel and 2 Samuel is the 10th book in the Old Testament. It follows 1 Samuel and precedes 1 Kings. Now, who wrote this book? Ancient tradition identifies Samuel as the author of the first 24 chapters of 1 Samuel and asserts that the rest of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel were completed by Nathan and Gad, two prophets mentioned in the book of Samuel. Today, many scholars believe that 1st and 2nd Samuel are part of the Deuteronomistic history and that various older traditions have been gathered together and edited by a nameless exilic editor or editors. The final event recorded in Kings occurred in 561 BC. Since the return from Babylon being 538 BC is not recorded, one assumes that 2 Samuel reached its final form sometimes between these two dates, that is between 561 and 538. It was written during the Babylonian exile as part of the Deuteronomistic history, though the older traditions that comprise much of the narrative are considerably earlier than this. Now, 2 Samuel recounts the long reign of David, beginning with his becoming king over Judah, as we heard yesterday, and Israel, followed by his brilliant military success and consolidation of the kingdom, and concluding with his failures as a human, a father, and a king. And we see in today's first reading, David, after a number of victories, thinking about the Ark of the Covenant. He decided to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. And we see how that Ark of the Covenant is brought. David recognized the presence of God in that Ark of the Covenant. And he even threw away all the status he danced to his heart. He danced with so enthusiasm. He was dancing for the Lord. This is what we call spontaneity in worship that is now disappearing in many of us. We just can't show our emotions in our worship. We just can't show how involved we are when it comes to worshiping our God. Our worship is too dry. I see it here in Europe. I see it so much that I find it very hard even to get involved in that worship. Oh, people may have their own opinions, but for me, Worship involves the whole of me. 
And if it involves the all of me, I must show how happy I am to have my Lord in front of me. And we have that Ark of the Covenant every time we receive the Eucharist. He comes on that altar. Why can't we dance for him? Why can't we rejoice with him? People may think you are mad. People may not understand you. Even your own relatives may not understand you. It happened with Jesus that the relatives followed him. They wanted to know what was happening to him. And when they came to him in the gospel passage of today, Jesus just made it clear that his real family was a family that lived according to the word of God. If you want to be part and parcel of the family of Christ, follow the word of God. Listen to that word of God and let it guide your actions. Let it guide the way you live your life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I. Love